What's going on, everybody? It is Monday, January 8th, 2024. Here are our top headlines for the day. A natural gas plant guarding U.S. Northeast from winter blackout is at risk. Consumers are at mortal risk. Next up, India is an emerging energy supplier to the EU major factors. Iran's oil trade with China stalls as Tehran demands higher uh, prices, California electric trucks mandate reduces transportation productivity and has other challenges. I will then dive in and cover um, some oil and gas uh, finance high level stuff. We also have um, Apache and Callan officially announcing a merger of about $4.5 billion of all stock equity. And then finally, Southwestern and Chesapeake near $17 billion merger. My man, Stuart Turley, kick us off. Where do you want to begin? Oh, hey, let's start off with our buddies up there in the east. Uh, natural gas plant guarding U.S. northwest from winter blackouts is at risk. Michael, this is actually sad. Um, this came from Bloomberg. Uh, this is actually the LNG import facility right out of Boston. And here's where it gets really sad. They have had to use this. Everett is the LNG import facility, and it has kept the Northeastern folks alive. I am not kidding about that alive. They, it kept the power plants going. Yep. And the facility shutdown underscores the challenges facing the American grid transition to cleaner energy as it accelerates climate change triggers wilder weather. <laughs> <laughs> love me some bloomberg baby love me uh, some bloomberg oh yeah but he they bring up some great points everett was a key resource in providing additional gas supplies to new england during extreme coal said gary uh cunningham director of market research at risk for traditional energy um here's where it gets in with the ferc michael they have been saying all along that our grid is near breaking point because of adding the renewables without the storage, which we can't afford. I just threw that in. He didn't say it. The, there are going to be facilities that are fossil based and climate damaging that are going to go offline and they're going to be replaced with alternatives that public policy and markets now have chosen. Here's where Governor Hochul, you have heard me laugh. I mean, talk about Governor uh, Hochul saying that she's got a 20% increase in energy this year, which was 2023. They got another one coming up in 2024. And then in 2025, they've got, guess how much? Oh, 100%. So yeah, it's it's pretty here's what I think is is hilarious is Bloomberg's trying to say really, really without saying it, they're trying to say, oh, this is not a great idea. Everybody else is in favor of it. I mean, they're seeing we got one quote in here. Gas is often seen as the transition fuel as the world moves to more environmentally friendly ways to generate heat and power. Everett's sign is a Everett's closer is a sign of that shift. But they're shutting natural gas. So on one breath, they're trying to say, well, you know, really natural gas is the transition fuel. But closing it down is a shift away from that, which is not good because we're going to just jump from one iceberg to the other. Again, we have to transition. It's, it, it is hilarious how, you know, I mean, good luck there. Good luck in New York. Good luck. You know what? Uh, one of the funniest lines that I got feedback, which is one of the rare times that I am funny is uh, we took a, a poll and that was all those in favor of letting uh, New York go with 100% no fossil fuels. That means anything delivered with diesel, anything, <laughs> you see where I'm going with it, you'd have no clues, no, uh, no clothes, no food. Um, all those in favor to let New York without fossil fuels, 100% renewable, I'm in. Let's try it. Okay, let's go to the next one, Michael. This is kind of fun. Mm -hmm. Iran's oil trade with China stalls as Tehran uh, demands higher prices. Uh, Michael, uh, this is from our buddies over there, readers. Uh, China's oil trade with Iran has stalled, and 
they are looking at trading in uh, yuan as opposed to the uh, U.S. dollar. Here's where it gets, and it goes five to six dollars a barrel below uh, Brent. But they have now come out and said uh, uh, the China smaller independent refiners called teapots have become Tehran's top client since the first of buying Iranian oil in 2019. Mm. They're, they absorb 90% of Iran's total exports uh, usually passed off. This is huge, but what is not in this article is that China has brought on almost another million barrels per day of refining capacity. So now they have outgrown the Iranian ability for them to say, hey, you're going to listen to us. <laughs> yeah, and remember, China's buying this is a pretty steep discount. Back in November, when those agreements were originally struck, it was about $10 a barrel. Looks like it's come down in the kind of the latest offer to somewhere between, or, or last month, cargos were bought between $5.50 and fifty cents and six fifty. Now it looks like the latest discount they're trying to negotiate is four fifty. But it's interesting. I mean, the question is, does Iran doesn't have that many people to sell to. So why are you poking the bear that it's 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 like the kid that complains to his mom what's he's mom i don't like your dinner well kid you're not getting dinner from anywhere so don't bite the hand that feeds you no and you don't want to poke the panda bear because everybody says they're cute until you poke stick your hand in there have you seen that one of the grid where the guy's sitting there and he's getting a picture and a panda comes rolling in and he starts chewing on the guy hey by the way we're at this point let's fly in uh, uh, I got a picture that I'm going to send to the, uh, the team. Let's fly in bear country. I got up at three this morning okay. and I was leaving bear country and I got a sign, a picture of me in front of the sign of the bear crossing <laughs> anyway. Okay. Let's go on to the next one here. So California electric, our buddy down there, Gavin Newsom is really just, he's entertainment. California electric truck mandate reduces transportation productivity and has other challenges. Unbelievable. You can't buy this. There are six bullet points and I only want to cover a couple of them. Mm -hmm. Electric trucks cost 50% more than diesel trucks, but have lower fuel costs in California where diesel cost and taxes are among the highest in the nation. Here's where this is a total misnomer on this one electricity in california is twice as high as it is in texas then you have the amount of time and where are you going to charge this thing uh that is a false statement large trucking companies can afford the large investments but they only make up 30 percent of all the trucking in california mm -hmm. so i can understand the electrical issue in that city in a downtown city trying to cut your smog in a city i think electric has got a place there i don't i don't want to go ahead and just say hey let's rule them all mm -hmm. out but uh the ports of area as an opportunity the electric trucks on the market can travel from the ports of los angeles and long beach there are thirty thousand trucks registered with the ports that could all be turned into an electric fleet the grid in that area, Michael, would not be able to sustain the amount of generation that it would take. The numbers are not there. <laughs> yeah, and what really this 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 doesn't impact. You think about this impacts long haul trucking. What it really impacts is the USPS, FedEx, UPS, Amazon. That's where it's going to get hurt now. Can Amazon, UPS, FedEx afford that? Yeah. The USPS? Well, they're already in debt. And guess who funds that? You. And guess who gets it in the drive throughs The consumers, when Amazon starts, you know, that free shipping that you enjoy, and you see those delivery trucks come up. Oh. Yeah, so exactly. The, the money is going somewhere. And whether or not you see it as a consumer with higher prices or, you know, however, however it works. So, you know, as always, you know, our favorite state, California, you know, we'd love to see it in the drive through. Yeah. The second favorite state is uh, New York. You got to you can't buy this kind of entertainment, <laughs> no. dude. 
Okay, let's go to uh, that. You want to let's cover the southwestern Chesapeake uh, near the 17 in your section. How's that sound? Yeah, we'll do that. All right, off to you, dude. Well, we'll go ahead and, and quickly cover um, before we get into that southwestern deal. I think it's important to cover oil and natural gas prices. We, we did see overall indexes on Friday um, rise about two tenths of a percentage point after really what was a week of of losing. We saw three straight days, Monday through Wednesday, um, to kind of start off the week, which which really dragged markets down. Nasdaq tumbled. Um, uh, mostly throughout the week, but did see about a, a tenth of a percentage point increase. We did see the the, the dollar index stay fairly flat. Ten year yields uh, jumped uh, jumped one point two percentage points as thirty year interest rates um, declined. Bitcoin still sitting at about a forty three forty four thousand um, dollars. Gold crossing all time highs, just above two thousand um, dollars at two thousand and forty nine. We did see crude oil rally on Friday very hard finishes up two dollars or excuse me finishes up a dollar 62 that's 2.2 percentage points um 7381 looks to open somewhere um here shortly um as we record this on Sunday afternoon it will, will open shortly um somewhere around 7395 that seems to be uh, the opening spot price for the futures market um Brent crude oil um only up about two tenths of a per- or two tenths of a percentage point uh 79 40 it's really interesting you see crude oil in the united states spike tremendously um but you see brent crude oil doesn't spike that much what does that mean well it probably has a little bit to do with with this iranian chinese oil trade in the fact of if china is going to stop buying iranian crude due to the discounts they're unable to receive it could lead way for other opec members to fill that gap and remember that brent oil price is really what uh, OPEC and OPEC plus itself is trying to control. So um, as we close that spread between crude oil and 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 Brent, it's only going to be more interesting. Um, when, you know, as we know, next next month, Stu, um, coming up here, I think at the end of January, we do have another OPEC uh, meeting, which they'll talk about more cuts. I mean, I, I'd be shocked at this point if we don't see another attempted small cut. Maybe it's just a signal to the marketplace to say, hey, we're here to continue to support prices or whether or not they actually feel like they need to continue to cut. And we know that there's rumblings that people aren't happy with the cuts. We know is it uh, we've had we've seen two countries recently attempt to pull out of um, OPEC, if only because they are unhappy with those cuts. Now, remember, who controls OPEC? Saudi and the UAE. They're the two biggest players. Uh, OPEC, Russia, if you consider Russia, if you consider OPEC plus, but speaking of OPEC, those two countries really set the standard for everything. They can afford the cuts. Everybody else can. It's why you see Saudi come in and, you know, last September have the little sugar on top with the extra cuts because they're the ones that can absorb it harder for other countries to do that. Um, and so I think member, what, let me just add this real quick. Your new member, Brazil, who just joined BRICS plus, uh, said, oh, by the way, we're joining, but we don't give a, a rat's uh, bahonkas uh, about the uh, quotas. So they said, and the head of mm-hmm. uh, um, Brazil's oil company, Petrobras, basically said, we're producing everything. <laughs> yeah, so. and, and, and I mean, that's good for you, the consumer. So just for, for all intents and purposes, that's great for you, the consumer, because that's going to lower prices for you at the pump. Um, specifically natural gas. We saw a very nice rise over the week. We saw it uh, close at $2.90. That is awesome um, from, a, for, from a natural gas standpoint in, in terms of producers. Um, um, you know, a lot, a lot of that uh, East Texas natural gas production, uh, some of that Haynesville um, production starts becoming a lot more economical as we start pushing three dollars. A lot of this uprising is again just due to the cooler weathers as we move into the winter season. Um, we also did see rig counts drop. Stu, let me go ahead and pull that up here. Um, rig counts we dropped one rig week over week. Uh, current count down to two hundred and or six hundred and twenty one. That's down one hundred and fifty one from last January twenty twenty. So you know Canada saw an increase of thirty nine rigs internationally we saw a drop of 23 so a net positive increase on rigs if only because canada keeps drilling hey if there's one thing canada is doing right Stu, they're picking up rigs when they need it to so we we like to see that internationally we're up 55 rigs from where we were in december of 2022 so it's going to be interesting to see what happens here so it it, it, it's going to be a it's going to be a long year i think there's two deals i want to cover Stu. first off um, we did see an actual M&A deal. Apache 
acquires Callan Petroleum in an all-stock transaction. Just to kind of read you guys the high levels here, this transaction was an all-stock transaction in which Apache acquired Callan for approximately $4.5 billion, which is inclusive of Callan's net debt. Uh, this pure, pl- this new pure play um, Permian company has large amounts of inventory, specifically in the Delaware and Midland Basin. Um, I love one of their key highlights, too. Uh, they, they're calling their new acreage oil prone. They say Apache's oil prone <laughs> acreage in Midland and Delaware Basin combined will increase by more than 50% following the transaction. For Apache's hope, I really hope. It is oil prone. Love oil, that. I the a hat tip to that IR guy of the week. Oil hat prone. I, oil prone. I've never heard that before. For their sake, I hope so. Oh, absolutely. Estimated what? overhead. You know, unfortunately, fourth uh, fourth bullet point. Estimated overhead operational cost of capital synergies to exceed one hundred and fifty million dollars annually. We'll pour a little out and have a quick moment of silence for all of the employees who will be involved in that. Um, okay. And unfortunately, that. And then I love this. Uh, addition, you know, one of their other uh, uh, bullet points, additional scale anticipated to improve credit file. Pro forma balance sheet will remain strong with a leverage of 1.1 net debt to adjusted EBITDAX. And remember, guys, that is just a completely made-up metric. That's non-GAAP. So just, I just love how they got to show that we're only – you know, if you if you do some fancy science with our net, with our debt and call it net and you do some weird stuff with our balance sheet and only, you know, if you watch our deal spotlights, you kind of see how we can get to an EBITDA number multiple different ways. You know, what do you leave out? What do you not leave out? Um, but don't worry. They're in good shape, guys, according to their non-GAAP financials. Um, hey, Michael, do you know how do you really bury money in a financial statement from an oil company? Uh, you use EBITDAX after exploration. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because you don't include four. Yeah, great. We've got, we've, got rev- we've got revenue of $10 million a year. Oh, that's cool. How much did you spend? Well, we spent $200 million. Yeah. Get it? And it's like, oh, oh. oh and we, got, a second we got 15 here. dry wells. <laughs> exactly. It took us 15 dry holes to get here. Now, I, yeah, I've never seen that, Stu. Come on. Oh, no, no. But that's EBITDAX. That's even Dax. Speaking of dry holes, let's move over to the next um, proposed merger. Southwestern Chesapeake near $17 billion merger. I think, it, you know, just to give you guys an idea, this deal is roughly um, uh, valued at $17 million. This merger of equals, it would create one of the largest natural gas producers in the United States. The deal could come together as early as next week, according to, uh, to people familiar with the situation. This is according, again, to our friends over at Reuters. Southwestern had a market capitalization on Friday of roughly about $7 billion. Chesapeake was a little bit more than $10 billion. Um, Southwestern stock rose about 7%. Chesapeake um, shares rose nearly three percentage point. Um, you know, this would be about 7.4 billion cubic feet of gas per day. This would basically uh, leapfrog EQT, making it probably the largest natural gas producer in the United States. You know, they, their existing positions, both in the Haynesville and Louisiana, would allow it to kind of refocus on some liquefied natural gas uh, exports on the Gulf Coast. Uh, you have to remember, guys, um, you know, Chesapeake was founded by Aubrey McLennan. You know, you talk about spending money. <laughs> That guy loved to spend money, um, you know, millions of uh, buying millions of acres across the country, um, you know, laden it with probably the most insane debt structure of all time that finally led to the thing being um, uh, filing for bankruptcy uh, in 2022. They were able to reduce reduce their debt by more than seven billion dollars through that process and prioritize, quote unquote, returning Cash um, to shareholders through a bunch of divestitures and exiting its Haynesville position, um, which is down there in Louisiana, East Texas area. They also sold a bunch of oil assets in Texas. They bought um, a bunch of other stuff. Point of the matter is, guys, they've been tinkering on. They needed to do something. They've got an insane amount of debt load. Um, can we go ahead and throw this tweet up? This is from WTI Realist. Um, it's, I think it says, all you need to know 
about what this uh, merger would look like. Staggering a pro forma, Chesapeake would be at two billion or two million cubic or BOE per day, and still almost be worthless. <laughs> that goes to show you the you know. Of course, it's a BOE. We're talking BOE. So what's that in you know to be about seven point four BCF per day? Being in the natural gas business is hard. You got to love to see these uh, uh, natural gas prices go above $3. That does make everything a lot more profitable. But, um, you know, this is a, a merger of equals. It'd be interesting to see what happens to the names. Um, I saw a few tweets go out there about, you know, can't really get, can you really get rid of the Chesapeake name? It's just so, it's just so legendary in the industries, thinking about, you know, all of the history behind it. Southwestern's been around for a while. But they're obviously going to have to come up with a, with a new, um, New new name or something because you know I don't you know or or you know because this is definitely a merger. It's going to be interesting to see how this all shakes out. Southwestern with a lot less debt than Chesapeake, but Chesapeake with a larger market cap. So I wonder so what the concession would, would, would be this there. Be like Hollywood dating, so it'd be South Cheek or oh. West West Eek, uh, West Check. Uh, My guess sure. is they keep the Chesapeake name, but in in in. I would think they would keep the Chesapeake name, but there's going to be not a lot of concessions. But Southwestern, if you're if you're a shareholder, if you're on that management team, you're 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 coming in saying we're equals here, and we're, right, you know. But I do think that I, my guess would be that. they keep the 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 Chesapeake name. We're definitely going to uh, cover Apache Callen on the deal spotlight. If this merger comes through with Southwestern and Chesapeake, we will definitely make sure to cover yeah. that as well. So these gives us two great deals um, to outline. But what do we miss, Stu? Well, we're going to, uh, this morning, uh, you'll be able to go out to the deal spotlight. We've got the other one that were just released uh, on Sunday. So uh, that'll be pretty groovy to go through. I'm having a lot of fun with these deal uh, spotlights and uh, really getting excited to see more of these. We got fantastic feedback on those so far, Michael. Yeah, I know. This is, this is a, a minerals deal in 30 minutes or less. Um <laughs> uh, that's that's the, the brand on this one but it'll be good we 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 love our friends over at at well database combo curve and energy net we got to include them um in this next episode uh, as as we checked out one of their lots um as always you can check out all of the information for the deal spotlight on the greatest website in the world www.energynewsbeat.com we don't got anything else to do should we let them go absolutely it's going to be a interesting week we got some series coming up that are just hold your breath absolutely guys all right for Stuart Turley I'm Michael Tanner we'll see you tomorrow folks